The Tekken franchise has a ton of characters. It seems like they've added more with every installment. Even so, there will always be a couple of characters you will be drawn to, whether it's their play style, backstory, or how they look. You say to yourself, I like this character. I'm gonna run with them. Today, I wanna share with y'all some of mine and the reasons why. Let's run it. We're first gonna start this list with somebody I like to call the counter hit god. The guy with the maniacal laugh. The guy's life who was extended by Dr. B and Yoshimitsu and then proceeded to test his newly gained power on them and the Manji clan. This dude only cares about causing chaos and mayhem. And for some reason, I love it. I'm talking about Brian Fury, baby. Why do I love this guy? He's a heavy hitter. You push buttons against him, he's gonna make you pay. Be prepared for massive damage. You're gonna pay with your face. And if you know what I'm referencing, I'm referring to in one of his victory poses where he is absolutely pummeling your face in and he's laughing while he does it. With his fighting style being primarily kickboxing, he has knees and elbows in his arsenal that you don't necessarily see with other characters. And the great thing about these is they aren't able to be parried. Yeah, Asuka made I'm talking about y'all. There's levels to this character. Obviously, you can use Snake Edge, which you probably will see a lot in green ranks. But as you get higher in rank, you'll get launched for that. If you want to flex your chops against someone, taunt your upper them. One of the more complicated sequences to execute in Tekken due to it being a just frame. Hell, it's still something that even I can't do. The man is execution heavy, but if you know how to use him, it'll all pay off. In addition, he has phenomenal character design. With him being part cyborg, he actually has robotic pieces that makes a part of his body, with his left arm and his right leg being made of metal. I use him so many times, I even forget that's even a thing. It's interesting seeing how someone like Brian, who was a police officer in his previous life, become a complete menace to society. And maybe that's why I love this guy so much, because he seems completely unhinged. Ever since he was introduced in Tekken 3, I've always liked him. He laughs at your despair, he shows no mercy, and he hits like a damn truck. I always will love this guy. <laughs> if you want to talk about somebody that has style, flair, and looks like a superstar, look no further. This character may be one of the best dressed ones in the entire game. I also call him Mr. Wall Carry because his combos can have you travel from one side of the stage to the other. I'm talking about Lee Chao Lan. Why is Lee on this list? The way this man carries himself is nothing short of someone that likes to indulge in the finer things in life. Buddy throws some type of explosive at the end of his rage art in your face, but it's disguised as a rose and it detonates. Tell me if that doesn't scream just style. Dude has a stance called Hitman where he's basically in like a half split. And he's basically looking at you and he's like, yeah, come on, bring it. He exudes such confidence and I'm definitely drawn to that. For some reason, this guy always gave me Michael Jackson vibes. Probably because I remember seeing a voice mod where they had Michael Jackson's voice slotted for Lee. Annie? Are you walking, Annie? Even though you wasn't inspired by him, at least to my understanding, I saw some small similarities. From how he dresses to the yells and his moves, we all know Michael Jackson has some incredible ad-libs. Yeah, yeah. They were a lot closer together than I thought in my eyes. I don't think Lee can sing, no. I never played Lee like that previously. I honestly thought he was a law wannabe just because they both shared a somersault move. But I picked him up in Tekken 7. He's currently my main at the time of this recording. He's a joy to play, even when you get tied up in his back one loops, like shoelaces getting tied up in a knot. If you want to talk about the definition of excellence, it's this guy, and he knows it. <laughs> excellence! <laughs> I swear, every time I hear this guy do an electric wind god fist, I'm always reminded of Macho Man Randy Savage. Rest in power. Of course, I'm talking about old man Heihachi. Come on now. Why do I have such appreciation for the old man? I think it's more so because of where he's ranked on tier lists from other players and content creators, and to still see him win in exquisite fashion. How do you not find Heihachi the more entertaining Mishima to watch? When I was a kid, which was quite a while ago actually, I always thought he was a pain to fight against. Guess as you grow older, things change, right? He's one of the very few characters that's been in every Tekken installment. There's just something about controlling an old man, and let's be honest, Heihachi looks like a freaking god with his physique, and he acts like it in a way where he feels like he's above the law and he's untouchable. With all that power, he definitely doesn't like to share it. And well, come to think of it, I don't think he even likes anybody. He doesn't like his son, his grandson, his adoptive son, his illegitimate son. Does Heihachi really like anything? Oh yeah, world domination. Yeah, he loves power, right. With how the canonical story ends in Tekken 7, it's unsure if he will return in Tekken 8. 
if he doesn't come back it's gonna be hard not having at least one rendition of him within this game he's one of the more recognizable and popular characters of the series he's been in some pretty sick crossovers like the playstation 2 rendition of soul Calibur 2 where he was an exclusive character as well as playstation r stars battle royale well if he doesn't come back we will always remember you old man stay jack <laughs> Next up, I can already tell you, you do not want to get too close to this guy because he will make you pay. Doesn't matter where you are. If you're standing up, he'll grab you. If you're on the ground, you're not safe. If you're in the air, be prepared, be slammed to the ground. Our favorite wrestler, King. Yeah, he's on this list. Why do I love the luchador? Well, it's funny that we're calling him that because he doesn't necessarily look like one if we're talking about size. With someone being close to 6'7 and 270 pounds, some of the moves that he's able to do shouldn't physically be possible. And yet he makes it look easy and entertaining. Like we're at a wrestling event, just watching in awe about all the incredible things King is doing. The vert that he gets from his flying elbow drop or his burning knuckle is absolutely absurd. As someone who's faced King quite a bit, his chain throws always suck to deal with, especially when the throws all look the same coming out, but they all have different button breaks. You gotta appreciate it though. Seeing a successful chain throw happen to you is pretty painful, but it's also pretty cool to witness it too. While King was always cool to me, he really caught my attention with Lil Majin put on a freaking showcase at 2018 EVO. Doing what he did at that high level of play, I think it really set the standard or changed the tone for how many other people were like, I want to play a King character because Lil Majin freaking kicked ass and made it look cool too. King is a big dude, but he has an even bigger heart. Being a manager of an orphanage, helping out the less fortunate kids. It's hard to not like King. And if you do, I just think you're a hater. I don't even know how to describe this guy. And that's because when you're facing him, you don't even know what you're seeing. What you do know is that you're in for an unorthodox style of match. Mr. Space Ninja Yoshimitsu, you're up my guy. He's one erratic character that has so many tools at his disposal that can be difficult to play against, but also entertaining to watch. You wanna talk about different stances? He has that. Teleportation, check. Health siphoning, done. Stabbing himself in order to damage his enemy? Sorry, what? Yeah, that's the type of stuff that you gotta deal with when you're facing an unpredictable Yoshi player. He's another character that's appeared in every Tekken installment, albeit it's under a different appearance every game. That's due to him wanting to mask his identity to the public. The character also made an appearance in another game, Soul Calibur, and he's been in every Soul Calibur installment after that. Are the Yoshimitsu and Soul Calibur and Tekken the same Yoshimitsu? Not exactly. The Yoshimitsu and Soul Calibur is actually the ancestor of the Yoshimitsu and Tekken, and that's mostly due to the different time periods. He's also one of the few characters that has a weapon that is actually part of his fighting style. It is not a gimmick that goes away after one use. As you get higher in rank, he does have a lot of moves that come with risk and can leave you vulnerable to be punished for. Doesn't make him any less fun to use though. If you love playing a character, you play that character regardless of the flaws that they have. That's why Yoshimitsu has a spot on this list. Last but not least, this character is bobbing and weaving and is ready to give you the goods. Whether that's a quick jab or an uppercut is up to you. You get to decide how you want your meal. Yep, I'm talking about Steve Fox, the boxer, man. Why is Steve an exciting character to watch? If you want to talk about someone that is technical with a capital T, it's this man. Seeing somebody use him with precision is like watching an orchestra perform in front of a live studio audience. Practice, practice, practice. Oh wait, what is it again? Practice, man. That's what it will take to be efficient with him. As any boxer would, he has a moveset that is predominantly punches, as opposed to somebody like Huang, who has a moveset that's predominantly kicks. He's not the cleanest boxer on the block because he's doing whatever it takes to take that W. You name it, he definitely doing it. Steve was first introduced to the Tekken universe in Tekken 4, where he was a byproduct of the experiment by the Mishima Zaibatsu to create super soldiers. And Nina's jeans, yes, Miss Death by Degrees Nina. Her jeans were used without her permission. Damn, what is it with consent, man? With being a byproduct, Steve doesn't have any recollection of his past history. He does find out that Nina is his biological mother due to the genes, but she doesn't want anything to do with him. A son not having his mother, what a shame. Steve, I hope you find out more about your past, buddy. 
And those are some of the characters that I've been drawn to from the Tekken series. I'm curious what some of y'all choices are. Like I always say, play who you want to play for whatever reason that you want to play them. And you probably guessed it. I do play a little bit of Tekken. Here's a video that shows me fighting off against somebody that was six ranks higher than me. And I pretty much held my own. Until next time, y'all. Stay easy.